Hey, comic lovers, E-Money, the old man, and Thor the Dog with Thunder here with you again. So, it's been uh, an exciting last couple of weeks. Uh, let's see, we had our final uh, sale of the season. We uh, just finished up for until spring next year. Probably, probably May. Yeah, so had a pretty decent sale. Pretty good film, sit up. You know, guy uh, came in at the last second and uh, bought up a few comic books. Got a couple of our key issues, but you know, don't worry. If uh, you know you come to our sales, we're gonna be back in the spring, and we're gonna be better than ever because we're gonna have dozens of new comic books to sell you. Dozens. Yeah. If we got six months to accumulate good stuff. Yeah. So dozens. we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have hundreds. Safe bet. I would say of the good stuff, we'll at least add. 150 comics. 150 comics. So uh, we're gonna have new slabs, new key issues. It's gonna be gonna be fun stuff. All right. So uh, on the Thor front, this excuse me. Yep. Thor and I went to Bernheim last week and uh, had a good time. We walked around. Didn't see any ducks though. Oh. Yeah. Your old buddies weren't there. Yeah. No ducks. We did see a lot of squirrels though. See. Thor. Thor really wanted to chase those squirrels. Cool. Yeah, and uh, you know we met met a few people, and uh, you know a couple of people, you know they commented on how pretty and handsome and gorgeous Thor was because he is, aren't you, boy? Your head is getting so big, yeah. you won't be able to get in the car anymore. Mm. And then we went to PetSmart and uh, picked out some uh, items for Thor. He got really close to a another smaller dog and uh, didn't growl at it, so. That's that's good progress for Thor. So uh, that's that's what's new with Thor. I have actually been working on a movie the last few weeks, which, which is why there was no back issues. Yeah, why we didn't have an episode week. last week. And uh, this I am. It, it, it's sort of a fun movie. I, it, it's a movie within a movie, and in the movie within the movie, I play. I am the sound guy. So in the movie, I am playing the sound guy. But sometimes when I am. The sound guy, I'm actually running sound. So it's it's kind of an interesting dynamic. So that's this, what's happening to me. It sounds like it'll give me a headache. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. All right, so. In my opinion, you've been goofing off and we haven't been doing our work. Yeah, shut up. All right, so this week, uh, we have a couple of cool comic books to review. We have the new Batman title, uh, Batman the Imposter, a, uh, ish, a uh, series from Black Label. And a couple more, we have the uh, Monster Kill Squad, we have Star Wars Bounty Hunters, we're going to be, it all away. We're gonna be reviewing all of those in just a little bit. All right. Ow! Hm. Finger, not hm. food, finger. Hm. All right. You want to part in a movie, buddy? You want to be a zombie dog? Zombie no? Dog. All right, guess not. This... Well, you think so, the way he tries to eat me. <laughs> this is Back Issues. All right, comic lovers, so before we get started today, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on your notifications, give us a thumbs up, and if you like, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of these comics, or give us some recommendations. All right, so uh, we're going to start with our mentions, but first, I'm going to tell you how we do these things, if you haven't uh, learned already. We do it on a five-shield rating system. What we do is we each give a comic book two grades. One for story and writing, and the other one for artwork. And then we take those four scores, combine them together, and give it a overall score with a potential five shields. But we're, no one ever reaches that. We've never had a comic hit five without rounding, or even with rounding, have we? No. I think four and a half. Four and a half, I think, has been the record. Mm -hmm. All right, so mentions this week. We only have one mention. It is a comic book, a uh, Batman title from uh, DC Black Label. Batman the Imposter, number one. Yep, and uh, Black Label has become sort of the uh, new Elseworlds for DC because they don't put out Elseworlds anymore, right? I haven't seen an Elseworlds title in a long time. All right, so continuity, I mean, makes for good story, good entertainment, but there's no continuity, so they can do whatever the hell yeah, they want. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yep. All right, so this follows a uh, relatively young Batman. Uh, he he kind of looks like Robert Pattinson. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but he looks like it to me. 
So you see, you know, his uh, uh, rawness uh, play out because he, he makes a lot of mistakes. I mean, he uh, misses a lot of his battering throws. He lets himself get hit when he shouldn't. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of things happening. So it also follows a uh, Leslie Tompkins who is wrestling with a moral dilemma about uh, what to do about Bruce. Well, it shows us their first meeting. Right. And, you know, she's wondering if, you know, allowing Bruce to continue as Batman is a uh, acid or a, uh, a uh, hurting Gotham. Yeah, she keeps threatening to call Popo on him. And I'm, I'm like, you know, if he doesn't want you to call, you won't call. Yep. But that's not Batman. So we also learn of a Batman who it has uh, murdered three people. And it was all caught on video. It, it looks like it was old Bruce. Yep. So, you know, another thing Leslie is uh, wrestling with was that Bruce. So we uh, see all this play out and, you know, the uh, the cops wanting to uh, find Batman. I mean, if they were, weren't uh, working too hard to find him before, now they really want him. So I didn't really care for the artwork that much. I mean, it's it's pretty gritty, which I guess is intentional to set the tone. And I'm not going to say it completely reminds me of uh, Department of Truth artwork, because that's pretty bad. But it it kind of has the, a similar feel to it with uh, the, the color schemes. Well, both styles are intended to be dark and gritty. Whereas the Department of Truth is so dark and gritty, I can't tell what the hell we're supposed to see, mm. which is why we don't get Department of Truth anymore. Um, but this artist, I appreciate his talent. I, I, I enjoy it. Mm. All right. So Batman the Imposter, book one from DC Black Label, comes in at three and a half shields mm. out of five. No. Yes, three and a half shields. Three and a half shields out of five. So there is your, your one mention for this week. All right, so moving on to our uh, top, well, it would be our top three if we didn't have any ties, but uh, it ends up being a top four. Of course, there was a tie. There was actually a tie for first and second and a tie for third and fourth. Well, when you only have 10 potential scores and most comic books rarely fall in the very bottom or the very top of that scoring system, then you're going to end up with some ties. Well, sure. And so, once again, to resolve the ties, we had to come up with a way of doing it. And we had a stare-off contest. Unfortunately, my old eyes get, I mean, I thought they were going to turn to dust after I kept them open for a little bit. So, E-Money won again. So, if you don't like the order that these are in, this guy. Okay. All right. So, number four per E-Money from AWA. Um... The second of a six-part miniseries, Telepaths. All right, so I mentioned this in the first issue when we uh, reviewed it. If you watched a uh, show called Flash Forward that was on, it was short-lived some yeah, years ago. Nobody watched it. That's why it's short-lived. Where some event happened and everyone was rendered unconscious around the Earth for, I think in the show it was like two minutes maybe. But in this this uh, comic, it was like 30 minutes. Disaster. So you can imagine the initial chaos that follows when, you know, the entire world goes unconscious. I mean, people operating vehicles and airplanes and, you know, any number of things. I and, mean, just a simple matter of somebody was coming down the steps. Yeah. If they pass out, they're going to keep going down the steps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot, lot of chaos uh, in the initial wake. Excuse me. And uh, another thing that happens in, in this version uh, is that some people wake up with telepathic abilities. Now, at the end of the first issue, I thought it might be everyone. Yeah, I thought so too. But it turns out it's probably maybe 10% of the population. Mm, 5 to 10%. Yeah. yeah. So you can imagine that's going to cause a big uh, national security issue, you know, when your thoughts are no longer safe. It's a high enough percentage. You better watch what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. So I can't do that. This if kind I try of to watch what I'm thinking. I'm going to think about what I shouldn't be thinking exactly. about. Exactly. So this kind of follows the uh, crisis from like every level. I mean, you have an inmate who busts out of jail who has telepathic abilities. You have a police officer who tries to fall, who tries to uh, 
uh, deal with his new abilities. And you have, you know, government, military, law enforcement, everyone, you know, trying to deal with the new situation. So it's, it's a good balance of things. I'm locking myself in the basement. <laughs> All right, so telepass number two out of six comes in at... Well, after rounding, four shields. Rounding, four shields. All right, next up from Marvel Comics, I think this is another miniseries. Um, this is Dark Ages number two. All right, now, story-wise, this is one I really enjoyed. The only reason that it ended up at number three was that the artwork was... So so, I think uh, we both scored it at three yeah, for both artwork. Gave it a three for art, which is keep in mind a three is okay. Right. It tells the story. It doesn't detract from the story. It mm. just doesn't enhance the story. Right. All right. So in the uh, first issue, a uh, mechanical like deity almost is awoken in the center of the earth and threatens to destroy everything, destroy the earth. And he pretty much shuts shit down. Yeah. And in a squad of superheroes was sent to stop him, and they all ended up getting killed. And I, I think they, remember, they managed to shut him down, but it cost everyone their lives. Uh, Wanda and Doctor Strange, I know, were among the group. So between the initial earthquakes, the uh, loss of power, and the wars, it says billions of lives were lost. So you can imagine the chaos that ensued in this post-apocalyptic world with, uh, you know, if nothing else, no power. And, you know, people are scrambling for resources, for shelter, you know, everything else. Well, let's face it. The human race, for the most part, unless you live in some third world country, we don't know how to survive without power. Yeah. We don't, we don't, couldn't get by. Yeah. So... On top of the squad that was killed in the initial battle, uh, lots of heroes and villains, for that matter, are killed in the chaos. But uh, amidst all the chaos, a message begins to spread throughout the world. The, the heroes use their abilities to uh, quell the uh, uprisings and says, it doesn't have to be like this. There's a better way. And I, I actually liked uh, this uh, uh, scene with Deadpool that when he's trying to help out, Hey, so some friends of mine have been brainstorming and they have a thought. You up for hearing it or should I go ahead and just ram this sword through your eye socket? So, that uh, was fun. I'd like to hear it. Mm hmm Yeah, please, tell me more. So, a uh, telepathic link uh, throughout the world with all of the uh, world's telepaths begins and it becomes crucial to communication with no electricity. And you know what? The first half of this, this issue, I gotta say, it's like, it's damn inspiring what they managed to do. And they build a network. Uh, Shuri, Tony Stark, Victor Von Doom all uh, work together to, uh, you know, build society back up. And, but of course, you know, there's still gonna be villains who are pushing for their own initiative and are looking to take advantage of the situation. So we see the, uh, you know, the other foot drop in the second part of this issue. So uh, it begins in Europe, and the heroes, for the most part, are oblivious to what's going on. So they need to uh, get, get wise really quick. So I'm excited to see what happens next. I really enjoyed this issue. So uh, Marvel Dark Ages number two ends up with four shields out of five. After rounding up. Yes. After rounding up. And like I said, the only reason it has a lower score is because of the artwork. It got a three. So, uh, great story here. All right. So, number two. Number two is from Bad Idea, Monster Kill Squad, number two. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Monster Kill Squad, the first issue just kind of introduced the... Uh, the characters and, you know, the, the squad and what they do. Explained that there were monsters. Right. And, uh, you know, what they're all about. So in this issue, you get a uh, more character development uh, from each from each member. You find out that uh, one of their, uh, I, I guess you would call him their tank. Yeah, he's definitely their tank. Yeah. Uh, he has a, a dirty little secret that he's been keeping from the not, members. Not, not so little, but... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then you have another one who's a witch and, uh, you know, uses her uh, powers in the field. 
and another member who is a devout Christian and is not so uh, Christian witch. Yeah, not so yeah. keen on her wicked abilities. And you know, surprise, surprise, the Christian woman is judgy. So um, we see the fallout from them uh, learning the uh, tank secret, and also we're introduced to a few new monsters. You know, last time we introduced to clowns which are oh, well, it was actually pretty sweet yeah they were kind of like you know pennywise type clowns uh here we get introduced to uh sasquatches and uh bigfoots and uh Yetis. windigos different things like that furry guys yeah so you know good to good to meet new monsters in this issue so good stuff good character development good story and uh, artwork is also pretty solid here yeah we both scored Fours across the board on both art and story. All right, so monster monster kill squad, four star four shields out of four out of five. All right, and number one number on the one. parade from Marvel, Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters number five. All right, so this is the uh, story of what happens to Han Solo's carbonated body between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And you see all these uh, powers working against each other because they want Han's body for one reason or another. Yeah, I mean, who the hell wants a guy for whatever? I don't really totally understand why they all want him. Well, I mean, a lot of him, a lot of them just want Han, you know, off the playing board. Others, you know, want to rescue him, like our, you know, merry band of rebels. And others, just like uh, Jabba and the Huts, you know, just want to use him as a trophy. So, you have the Huts, the Empire, uh, the Rebels, and a uh, new, relatively new group, uh, Crimson Dawn, who you may remember from the Solo, a Star Wars story movie. And uh, they're all working against each other, and Crimson Dawn is like kind of manipulating things from the shadows. So, it's great storytelling. You see Boba Fett working to uh, take back his uh, bounty and get it to Jabba and our rebels trying to rescue him and you know great stuff here and uh, pretty solid artwork as well and you also get introduced to uh, Crimson Dawn's uh, future plans and you get a little preview in the final panel it says a new chapter begins af shortly after this one Crimson Rain so we're going to be looking forward to that so, Star Wars, War of the Bounty Hunters, number five, our number one comic for this week with four shields out of five. Correct. All right, so there are our picks for this week. What do we have going on for, well, this week if you are watching this on Wednesday? All right, so coming up, we have Thor number 18. Uh, been enjoying the Thor run. Mm -hmm. um, do you know who Joe Hill is? Um, I, I know I've seen his name on uh, comic credits or maybe TV show credits. Probably movie credits or book credits. He's Stephen King's son. Oh, okay. And I've read several of his books. He's a very good author. I mean, he reminds me a lot of his dad. Um, does some pretty creepy stuff. Um, so he's written a comic book called <gasps> Refrigerator Full of Heads. Okay. Is that like eight heads in a duffel bag? I don't know. I haven't read it. Okay. It sounds good. And since it's written by Joe Hill, I had to give it a shot. Uh, we'll let you know what we think. Um, remember the robot book? Not all robots? Not all robots, yep. We've been enjoying that. Number mm -hmm. three comes out. All right. But when it's all said and done, this is another week of the bat. Oh. Because you have Batman number 115. Batman Secret Files. Now, that's a book that's hit or miss. I mean, some of them have been good, some of them have been not so good. Mm -hmm. But uh, this time, they're going to focus on Peacekeeper 01. Okay. All right, next, we read the, this last month, Batman vs. Bigby, A Werewolf in Gotham. Oh, nice. A, a Wolf in Gotham. Um, that was pretty good. Another nice. Black Label story we've mm -hmm. been enjoying. And then Legends of the Dark Knight, number six. So, All right, so four, four, four new books. Batman issues. All right, so looking forward to this week. And now we are going to head up into the garage with Thor.
All right, comic lovers, back out here in the garage with Thor, and I have a brand new Stump the Old Man question for you. Are we ever going to get... You need to do more movieisms. When I come up with them, we will do them. Y'all need to send in ideas for movieisms to get the old man off the hot spot. <laughs> All right, so uh, I thought I would do, you know, current events, what's popular right now. So I came up with one from the Hulu series. Why the Last Man? Get up here and get this because it's going to be a while. I got to tear into to, to big e, e money here. Oh, so you're going to ask me a question about a TV show that I got the first trade and you're piddling and paddling and not reading. Working. It. I work, I got time for it. And you haven't finished the first trade. We've not watched, watched the first episode of the show yet, even though the series finale has already aired, and yet you're going to do a trivia question. You have some cojones. Okay. So what's the question? So, in the comic series, Why the Last Man, what is the name of the monkey? And then you're going to ask me a silly question about the damn monkey. The monkey. The monkey, the monkey has a... It's got something to do with a typewriter keyboard. The and symbol. His name is Ambersand. I thought it was pronounced Ampersand, but... I think it's Amber. Yeah. Ambersand, Ampersand, the and symbol. I'll allow it. That and is yes correct. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right. And, you know, he... he the. Main character has this big, long explanation as to why he named him that. I for, I've forgotten what it was now. Oh, but, really uh, mean. yeah. He's an escape artist. At least he is in the comics. I don't know. The guy, not the monkey. Right. And uh, he, he has some relation, some interest in the ampersand symbol. That's why he named the monkey. So, uh, old man wins it this time. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, a lot of fun stuff came from uh, DC FanDome this last weekend. A lot of big trailers came out. The old man, as you might know, doesn't watch trailers because, you know, they give too much away. I watch them if it's something I don't know anything about. Mm. I actually had this discussion with uh, some of the people on the set this last weekend. And it's like, why do they do that? Why do they give so much away? And they're like, because they make like, you know, another $100 million easy on, you know, ads on, on YouTube. Still sucks. Yep. And, I mean, you can have a trailer. I mean, that's fine. People are going to watch the trailer. But it doesn't have to give everything away. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you guys have heard me make this uh, argument before. But, you know what? They're not, they're not going to change their ways based on old E-Money's word. All right. So, we're going to have more comic reviews next week. And uh, well, upcoming... May maybe we will unless he decides to take another sabbatical. Mm. And, uh... Coming up, we have the Eternals and Spider-Man No Way Home before the year is out. And a lot of cool stuff coming in 2022, both from DC and Marvel. So, uh, looking forward to it. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Excelsior. True believers, holidays coming up. We got Halloween. Send us pictures of your costumes. We'll see that. Mm-hmm.